Hello, my name is Tyler, and today we're making an appointment scheduling website. This is where all of the magic happens, and just look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Wow, this is beautiful. Now, obviously, you don't need to make the website look exactly like this. You can choose from hundreds and hundreds of different designs and mix and match to literally trillions of different designs. But I think this website is looking really good, and I'm gonna show you how to make this this exact one step by step with no steps skipped. This website is great for anyone who needs to book an appointment. So maybe you're a consultant or a dog groomer or a lawyer, an accountant, a doctor, a therapist, a dentist, a dermatologist, a salon, a trainer. Do you need to set up a regular meeting or a Zoom meeting or anyone who needs to make an appointment? And let's be honest, that's pretty much everyone these days. I'm gonna show you how to do it step by step with no steps skipped. So let's begin. Let me show you how it works. So obviously Obviously the design can be any design that you want, but I'm going to show you how it works right here. So the person on your website can choose a date. So once they choose a date right here, let's say they want it to be uh, the 20th, then they can choose a time right here. So they can choose a time. I want it to be at 1 o'clock p.m. and then click next step. It's super easy for them to schedule an appointment with you. So all of these different options are optional. So you can have your services here if you want so they can book what type of appointment that they want. So we can check off some of these and we can scroll down and we can click next. You can also attach a price if you want to, but it's not necessary. And then we can click on next. Once we do that, it's super simple. We fill out all of this information and then we click next. All right, it's gonna confirm all of our booking information. We can send a note right here and we can scroll down and hit finalize and that will finalize it and we'll get a confirmation email and this cool booking number right here. And now we have all of that information right here and as the admin, you also get an email telling you that someone booked an appointment and then you guys meet with your appointment and do your thing. All right, so what are we gonna learn? We're obviously gonna learn how to put this booking scheduling appointment on our website, but we're also gonna learn how to make this entire website. Now you can obviously make this look however you want. And I'll show you how to choose from all of these different designs. But in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this logo, all of this top bar up here, this button up here, how to get all of this design in here and how to control all these designs so you can obviously put in your own content. I'm going to show you how to put in this section and this section. It looks really awesome super color coordinated, how to control these testimonials and put this in right here. If we scroll down, I'm gonna show you how to put in this footer right here, it looks super cool. And if we go back up, I'm gonna show you how to put in this about page. We're gonna put in this image and this picture, a little message from the founder. Obviously you can change all of this. These three sections right here, a really cool picture, maybe a link to a video. If we scroll down, we're gonna make all of this. Then I'm gonna show you also how to make this services page. All right, so we're gonna put in the services page and all of this, a sliding little thing right here. Looks super awesome, super cool. We're gonna do all step by step. We're actually gonna skip the projects page. I don't even know why that's there, but I guess you can add that if you want to, but we're gonna skip that. We're just gonna go straight to the contact page and I'm gonna show you how to put all of this in this contact form so people can fill it out and they can contact you. So this website is really about people connecting with you, scheduling an appointment, filling out this contact form. It looks super awesome. We'll show you how to put in this map right here and everything like that. Basically, I'm gonna show you how to do everything step-by-step step with no steps skipped. We're gonna make this entire website, everything from getting your website name all the way to making your logo, making this form, making everything on this website. All right, I think you guys are gonna love it, so let's begin. All right, the first thing that we're gonna do is get your domain name. Your domain name is your website name. So my domain name is tyler.com. Facebook's domain name is facebook.com. Your domain name will probably be yourwebsite.com, yournonprofit.org. That's your domain name, also known as a URL, a domain name, a website name. They're all the same thing. 
it's a domain name. Your domain name costs about $14, maybe $13 a year. It fluctuates here and there, but there's really no way of getting out of that cost. You have to have a domain name. You have to have a website name in order for people to type in something to go to your website. All right, and by the way, there are only two things that cost money in this entire video, and that's your domain name and hosting. Everything else is free. The second thing that we're gonna be doing is getting hosting. Hosting is about $10 per month. But I'm gonna show you how to get a discount so these are actually much less expensive. So if your domain name is basically your website name, the thing that you type in, what is your hosting? Your hosting is a computer that's on 24 hours a day that holds all of your content. It holds all of your images. It holds all of your text. It holds everything. So basically, if you only had a domain name, if you only had a website, people can type it in, but none of this would show up. None of this right here, none of these images would show up because there's no place online to store all of this information. So hosting, again, is a computer that's on 24 seven and has super fast internet and holds all of your text, your images and everything like that. The next thing that we're doing is installing WordPress. That is free. WordPress is what's called a content management system. It helps you manage your website content. So instead of having to know HTML and CSS and all this nerdy stuff that takes up a whole bunch of time, it does it all visually for you. It saves so much time and it's the most popular way in the entire world to make a website. Places like Shopify, Weebly, Wix, Squarespace don't even come close to the popularity of WordPress. So here we can see some really awesome people who use WordPress like the New York Times, CNN, Forbes, Best Buy, Sony, UPS, and GM. And if we scroll down, we can see other cool people like Jay-Z and Katy Perry. So that's WordPress, the best in the entire world. The next thing that we're gonna be doing is making your actual website. You're gonna be doing all of the fun work and the labor, so that is also free, even though that would cost you thousands and thousands of dollars to have a web developer create this website for you. And honestly, I don't even know if it would be as good as you doing it yourself because we spent a lot of time figuring this out right here. We made a spreadsheet that was pretty boring to do and we found all of the solutions for scheduling an appointment and this was by far the best, most simple, easiest, most elegant, most perfect, best design one that we could come up with. All right, so the total cost of everything with the discount is about $10 per month, or, and I think this is a better option, $30 a year. So $30 to have this appointment setting website distributed across the entire world, or about $3 monthly, I think is a fantastic Deal. So let's do steps one and two. Luckily, we can do them at the same place. We can do it at hostgator.com, H-O-S-T-G-A-T-O-R.com and press enter. So I do get commission for recommending HostGator. So if you use HostGator, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. But I've been using HostGator for 15 years, way before I was making any YouTube videos. And I just really like them mainly because of their live chat. So if you ever have a problem, you just live chat with them and they'll fix that problem super easily for you. There's also 24 seven, 365 phone, email, and again, live chat support. And I just think that you guys are pretty awesome. So let's get to it. All right, so we have all these options, hosting, pro hosting, essentials, domain support, and we could use pro hosting, but this is just way too much stuff and we can always upgrade later, so we don't really need it. So we're just gonna go with the hosting. And we have these three plans right now, shared hosting, website builder, and WordPress hosting. Now you'd think that you'd use WordPress hosting because it's WordPress hosting, but actually it just costs more and it has all these extra bells and whistles that I don't think that you really need and you can always upgrade later. So we're just gonna go with the shared hosting. So just click on shared hosting. And if we scroll down, we can see that there's three different plans here, the hatchling plan and the baby plan and the business plan. But if we look at this price right here, it's 275 a month. I have a secret. If you go up here and you go to forward slash unlock, U-N-L-O-C-K, U-N-L-O-C-K and press enter. It's the same page, but that goes down to $2.57 a month. So now you've just saved a whole bunch of money or at least a little bit of money. So again, we have our three plans here, the hatchling plan, the baby plan, and the business plan. The business plan is just way too much. We don't even need to think about it. It's just too much. We don't 
need it. It really is between the hatchling plan and the baby plan. The difference between the hatchling plan and the baby plan is the baby plan offers unlimited domains. So you can have like your website.com, your mom's website.org, your business website.net, your friend's website.com. You can have as many domain names on a single hosting package that you want. Where the hatchling plan, you can only have a single domain name, but of course you can always upgrade later. So if you're just starting out with a single domain name, a single website, name and I definitely go with the hatching plan. All right, so that's just what we're gonna go with. We're gonna go with the hatchling plan. So just click on buy now, unless of course you have multiple domain names already, then you do the baby plan, but really you're probably only developing one website at a time. So hatchling plan, buy now. Now this is where the magic happens as they say. We have two options. We can say I already own this domain or I'm registering a new domain. You choose I already owning this domain if you got a domain name from somewhere like godaddy.com. So all you would do is click click I already own this domain and type it in right here, I already own it.com. Or if we're registering a new domain, like I'm guessing most of us are, you would click register a new domain and type that in right here. Once we do that, we're gonna get some options up here, the .com, the online site, store, website, text, space, host, net, club, info. And basically this is the extension to your website. Like most websites are mywebsite.com. But sometimes this .com isn't available, so you choose another extension. Some popular extensions are the .net, the .org, and maybe a cool extension is something like a dot space. So if your domain name isn't available, maybe you would be creative with the extension or maybe you can change the domain name a little bit so that you can get the dot com, which is the most common and most popular. So I'm just gonna go with the dot com because that is available. It's gonna make sure that it actually is available. Then we're gonna see all of this right here. In addition to your website, you can add on more. Obviously, I think they just wanna make money and it's not like someone's gonna steal your your idea or anything. So I really don't think that it's necessary at all. So we're just gonna skip all of this and we're gonna scroll down and we can see right here this domain privacy protection. Now what this does is usually when you register a domain name or register your website name, that information like your name, your email address and your phone number gets registered and sometimes people, they look up that information and they'll email you or they look up that information and they'll call you trying to sell you on some web services that are complete BS and it's basically just spam. So you wanna make sure that this is checked if you definitely don't want any spam calls. But if you're like me and super cheap and you don't mind a few spam calls, you can save $15 per year. So I'm gonna uncheck this right here and I'm just gonna know that I might get a few spam calls and it might be a little bit annoying, but I will save $15 a year. All right, next we're gonna scroll down. And again, it's gonna ask us the package type. We already chose Hatchling unless we didn't and we want unlimited domain names or unlimited website names. Then we would choose the baby plan, but the Hatchling plan for a single website is great. Then we're gonna go to the billing cycle. Now this is where the strategy gets involved because we can save the most amount of money by choosing correctly. Now, if we wanna save the most amount of money up front, then that would just be the one month plan. But because the discount only applies for that one month, you wouldn't be saving the most amount in the long run. So it really is about balancing how much you pay up front with how much you pay over the long run. And I think the best balance between both of those is the 12 month plan. Because on the 36 month plan, you'll be paying the most up front, but the least in the long run. But the one month plan, you'll be paying the least up front, but the most in the long run. And I just think the 12 month plan with $76 off has the best balance out of both of them. You're only paying $2.58 a month where the three year plan you're paying, you're paying $2.57 a month. So I'm just gonna go with the 12 month plan, fill out all this information, put in a password, put in our security pin, enter in our billing information. So like your first name, last name, phone number, address, country, state, I am in California and zip code. Then we're gonna go up here and it's gonna ask you, do you wanna pay by credit card or PayPal? So just type in your credit card name, your credit card number. Don't worry, this isn't a real credit card number and your CVV code and your expiration date. Once that's all done, we can scroll down and it's gonna ask us about additional services. And I can 
could just make it really easy for you. No, 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 and no. But really, let me explain it. Do we want SSL? Our website already comes with SSL, which is basically just security for our website, so we don't need it, so make sure that that is not checked. Do we want Site Lock Essentials? This is just protecting you from hackers, but we can always download something to our website that does that. So I'm gonna save you $24 a year and we're gonna uncheck that. Do we want professional email? I personally think that if you were to get professional email, it would be from Google rather than Microsoft. And your website already comes with basic email, so I really don't think that we need this. And do we wanna back up our hard work? I'll show you how to back up your work and we can save $24 a year, my God. We can uncheck that. And then it's asking us, do we wanna improve our search rankings with HostGator SEO tools? I don't even know what that is or what they would do, so we definitely want that not checked. Then enter in our coupon code, make sure it says unlock right here, U-N-L-O-C-K and click validate. And now we can review our order. So we have 24 seven, 365 live phone chat email support, which is free. Instant account activation, whatever that means. Money back guarantee for 45 days, that's nice. And registering a new domain. So we're registering our new domain for a year. It'll automatically renew. And we have the hatchling for 12 months for a total of $31. Now this might be $30 to $35. It should be somewhere in there. And I think that is a super great deal, less than $3 a month to have your website to the entire world, so that's awesome. You can click I have read to the host gator terms of service and click check out now. So congratulations, we've done the hardest part, which is just deciding that you want a website. After you check out, you're gonna see a page like this that allows us to install WordPress. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So anywhere it says install WordPress, just say install now. After we click on it, it's gonna ask us the version, just keep it as it is. The protocol, just keep it as it is, and your domain name. I have a lot of domain names, but you probably only have one, so I'm just gonna choose the learn how to create a website. Now we want this directory right here to be blank, nothing in it, because if you do have something in it, it's gonna install it on yourwebsite.com forward slash something instead of just your main website.com. Then we can give a site name and description. So this site name would usually be your business name. So I'm just gonna say make a website. And for the description, this would be the thing that describes your business. And we can always change it later. It's not really a big deal right now, but if you're a plumber, maybe you'd put Los Angeles plumber. I'm just gonna type in learn how to create a website. And then we scroll down and we see the admin username and password. I'm just gonna put in my name for the username. You have to remember this. So maybe write it down and for the password, I'm gonna hide it right now and type in a password. All right, and for my beginning email address, I'm just gonna say Tyler at learnhowtocreateawebsite.com. You can choose your language. I would suggest not selecting any of these plugins right here and we don't need to select a theme yet right here. I do suggest putting your email in here just in case you lose your login details, but you should have written them down already. And then I'm gonna press in Install. That's gonna install WordPress. It used to be a very hard thing to do, but now it's super simple. All right, now it says, congratulations, the software was installed successfully. So we're gonna see if our website works. So all we do is click on this link right here. And as we can see from this sad face, the website doesn't work. And that's because the website takes a little bit of time, maybe 10 minutes, maybe an hour, maybe two hours, sometimes up to 24 hours, even though it's pretty rare for your website to spread across the entire internet and become available everywhere in the world. So I'm just gonna close this page for now and I'm gonna take a little break right now and when I come back, hopefully the website will work. All right, so we're back. It's been about an hour, which was probably too long, but we can now check our website and we can see that our website works. It's not a very good website. It's not a very impressive website, but some people would charge you a lot of money just to make this, just to have your website online without really even doing anything. But this isn't very fun. We need to log into the back end of our website to make some changes. But right now we can explore, we can click on some hello world blog post and we can see it and that looks great. Everything looks good, but it's not really that great. So how do we log in to change things? We can easily do that by going up here and going to forward slash WP admin. 
wp-admin and press enter. Now we don't really need this up here, so we can close this. And we're gonna use the username and password that we just made, so mine was Tyler and my password. Then press login. All right, so we've logged into the dashboard. This is called the dashboard. It's where you log in and you can make all of your changes. We can also visit our site again by clicking up here on our business name. And that will take us to the front of our website again, but we can tell that we're logged in because we have this big black bar up here. And that's basically how you know that you're logged in. You can always get back into the dashboard by clicking on your website name again, and that'll take us back into the dashboard. The first thing that I like to do is get rid of the pre-installed programs or apps. In WordPress, they're called plugins. So if we scroll down here, we see this is pre-installed, this is pre installed this is pre-installed but I like it when everyone starts off on a clean slate so to get rid of these unnecessary plugins all we have to do is click on plugins over here then scroll down check off everything go to the drop down press deactivate then apply that'll deactivate all the plugins but now we need to delete them so click on this again now select all of them and go to delete and apply then press OK. And now all of these plugins or programs that were pre-installed onto your website unnecessarily are deleted. So the next thing that I like to do is go back to the dashboard and see if there are any updates. So it says updates to right here. And if WordPress had any updates, it would say it right here and we can update WordPress. If we scroll down, we can see that these themes need to be updated, but we're not gonna be using these themes, which I'll explain in a little while. So we can either update them or not update them, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna update them so I remove this annoying two right here. All right, so everything is updated. I wanna do a couple more things, including showing you how to change your password if you want and updating the permalinks. So to change your password, we go to users and we can just click on our name and here we can either add users like up there or we can scroll down if we wanted to, we would uh, set our new password. All right, we don't need to do that because we already set our password, but it's just super handy if you wanna give a login to somebody else, you can add a new user right here. The next thing that I like to do is change the permalinks. Let me show you what that is. So if we go up here on our website and visit our site and we click on hello world, we can see the link structure. So it says our website dot com forward slash 2021 forward slash 0106 slash hello world. That's a little bit too complex for me. I wanted to just say our website.com forward slash about or forward slash contact or forward slash hello dash world. And to me, that's a lot easier. So we're gonna change the permalinks, the structure of the links so we can go back into our dashboard. And then we can go to settings and we can go to permalinks. Once we do that, we can just click on post name instead of day in name. And then we can save changes. Then we can go back to the front end of our website and we can go back to that hello world. And now we can see it's much more simple. It's ourwebsite.com forward slash hello dash world, which is much easier. All right, so this website is looking fine, but it definitely isn't looking great. So how do we make it look great? And basically this is the theme of our website. So the theme has this green, it has uh, this title up here, it has this uh, headline up here and that's the theme of your website. I wanna show you how to install a new theme that is much better than all of this that allows you to control your website and make any design that you want. It also comes with a whole bunch of starter websites. So to install a new theme, all we have to do is go back into our dashboard and then go to appearance and themes. Once we do that, we're gonna click on add new. Then we're gonna search for Astra, that's A-S-T-R-A. I think this is the best theme. Then then we can see it, we can go to details and preview to make sure it's actually good. Five stars, almost 5,000 ratings. I think it has over a million installs. Then we can click on install. It doesn't look that great here, but it will in a second. And then we're gonna click activate. All right, that will activate our theme. If we go back into the front end of our website, we can see that the website has changed. We have our title now up here. We have our sample page over here. We have our hello world here and here. And we have this sidebar. Obviously, this doesn't look great. This is just the blank theme. So now what I wanna do is I wanna install demo content onto this blank theme. And that's gonna make your website look super 
awesome. All right, so let's go back into the dashboard and then go to plugins and add new. So what plugins do is they extend the functionality of WordPress. It's just like having an app on your phone or a program on your computer. You can install thousands and thousands and thousands of plugins that people have made absolutely free on WordPress. And that's the beauty of WordPress. That's why it's so much better than everything else because anyone can build something for WordPress that you can use. So for this plugin, it is called called Starter Templates, T-E-M-P-L-A-T-E-S. And this works specifically with the Astra theme. So we can see it right here, 800,000 active installations, five out of five. We can go here to look at more details. So if you're ever installing a plugin, you can look at the details, you can see how to install it, which is what we're doing now. We can see the description, we can see the screenshots, which will show you what it'll look like. We can see the ratings. And so this just helps you choose the different programs, choose the different plugins that you want on your website. So all we have to do is click install now and then click activate. Once we've done that, we're gonna see the starter templates in the sidebar right here. And it's gonna ask us to select a page builder. But how do we know which page builder to select? Is it Elementor, is it Beaver Builder? Is it Gutenberg? Is it Breezy? One of these is the clear winner and is much better than all of the rest. And that is Elementor. So we're gonna click Elementor. And now if we go up here and we make them free, all the free ones, we can see all of the different designs that we can choose from. And we can mix and match these into trillions of different designs. And obviously we can design anything ourselves also and add to any of these designs. So which one do we want? And this is the one I'm gonna choose right here, this roofing service. But obviously you can do whatever one that you like. And I'm gonna show you how to make it completely different. So now all we have to do is import complete site. Click on import. If we already imported something, we can check delete previously imported site and it'll delete it, but we haven't. So I'm just gonna press import. And now it's importing all of the different plugins that we need, all of the content, all of the different menus, all of the different logos. Of course you can change and we're going to change all of this, but it's gonna save us tons and tons and tons of time. This might save you 10 10 hours of time. All right, now our import is complete and successful. It took a few minutes. So I'm gonna click on view site and we can exit out of here. And now we have a complete, very cool website right here. And it is looking really awesome. Probably not the website that you personally wanna make, but so far for the time involved it is looking really cool. So we have all of our different pages here, like the about us page, and we can check that out and that is looking really good. We have a services page also looking very good. Maybe our services can go on here. We have a projects page. Maybe our different projects would be able to go on here. We have the contact us page where people can contact us. I'll show you how to put this in there. We have a little map right here and this is looking pretty awesome. We also have this get a free estimate. It doesn't do anything, but we'll make it go to another page if we want. So we can go back to the home page, and we have all of these different pages and this entire design right here, but you don't want it to look like this. We actually want to edit our design and make it look much better and make it customized to your business, obviously. So that's super easy to do. All we have to do is click up here, edit with Elementor. So whatever page that we're on, we're gonna see this edit with Elementor button, and all we have to do is click on it. All right, so now we have our entire website that is editable. We don't see the very top the header of the website because that's not part of the page and I'll show you how to edit that later. But right now we have all of this. So anything that we click on right here will be editable over here. We can also drag any of these things. Like we can drag this intersection here or this heading up here and drag it over here or this image over here and we can drag it over here and we can add to the website. The other thing that we can do is we can control entire sections. So we do that by this up here. We can see this and we can click on it. It's gonna tell us we can also right click. But if we click on it and then over here, we can control the section. So anything that you click on here is gonna be controllable over here. So we click on this and we can control it. We click on this and we can control it and we click on this and we can control it. So anything that we click on, any of these buttons or anything, any of these different sections, we click on it and we can change it super easy. 
If we scroll down, we can also add other sections. So we scroll down and we see this plus button and we can add sections with one column, which would be something like way up here. The column goes all the way across. We can also see something like two columns, which if we go up here, we can see that this is one column that she's in, and this is another column that the text is in. So that's two columns. If we go down, we can also see three columns, which is something like this, one, two, and three. So we can add our different sections right here. But let's exit out of there. Let me show you some other things that we can do. We can also click on this S right here. And again, if we go to free, we can add any of these pages to this page. So let's say we wanted some parts of this page into our main page. All we have to do is click on it and import it. And we'll have this entire page in our current page. We can also go to blocks and add different sections to our page. So let's say we like this quote right here. All we'd have to do is click on it, press import block, and that will import this. We have this now in here. We can also take this entire section and click hold and drag it somewhere else. Maybe we want this right here. And we have that quote right there. This is a super cool way of making a website. Just searching for the different sections that we need and then importing them is super awesome. But obviously we can change any of these individually if we want to. We can also exit out of these. So if we don't like this, we decide we don't like it and then just click X and it exits out of there. So that's super cool. Well, let's see how to edit some things. We can click on this right here, this text, and we can edit it right here. Or we can click on this right here and we can edit it here. Or maybe we can click on a button and we wanna change the color. So when we click on a button, we're gonna see these three tabs up here, content, style, and advanced. The content is like the text and the link. So we can change this text to contact us. So all we have to do is start typing in contact and that will come up. And now when people press this contact button, it will go to the contact page. We can obviously also change any of this text here by just going in here and changing it. We can also change any background. So maybe we don't like this background right here. We click on this and now it gives us those three tabs again, layout, style, and advanced. So we can go to style and we can change the image. So maybe we don't like this image. We wanna choose a different image and we can either upload files, get it from our media library. So everything already on our website, or we could get free images from Pixabay. This is a copyright free image source. So maybe we wanna search for something like a mountain. And maybe we like this one right here. So we can click on it and we can save and insert and now we can see that image right there, but it's really hard to see because the text is so light. So something that we can do is we can scroll down and go to background overlay. And we're gonna overlay a color on it. So we can click on classic overlay and we can choose our color. Let's make it black and then we can make it darker. And now we can see that that looks pretty cool. Maybe not that cool though, but we can also go up here and we can change it to a different image. So if we go to free from Pixabay, maybe we need something a little bit darker like night sky. We can go ahead and click on it and save and insert. And then we can go back down and change that background overlay to maybe something a little bit lighter or a little bit darker. And that is looking pretty cool. So there are tons and tons of ways that you can edit your website. Let me show you a few more examples. Maybe under here, we want an image of some nature right here. So we can go ahead and click on this right here. And then we can click, hold and drag anything from here, anywhere that we want. So maybe we want it under this, why choose us? And then we can again, click on style and we can change the width of the image. Maybe we want it to be that wide. We can go to content and we can choose the image and we can go to the free images again. And maybe we like this image right here. So we'll save and insert it. And now we have a very cool image in right there. So we can do that with almost anything. We can go up here and we can drag in a heading or an image or a button, put a button in right there. And then for the content, we can make it center for the style. We can change the style of it. So like the colors. So, Maybe we want to change the background color to something else like this 
nice blue right here. Or maybe we wanna add in something else. We can put in a video. So just click, hold, and drag in a video. And you can add and edit tons and tons of things. We can also click, hold, and drag different columns and rearrange them. Another thing that's super important is the spacing. So we can click right here and we can go to advanced and we can see the spacing. So this margin and padding is spacing. So maybe we wanted more spacing right here or less spacing. And we can also see for the bottom of this entire section, we could do more or less spacing. So maybe we wanted a little bit more and that will give us more spacing. And the best way to learn is really just to dive in and start playing with it, but it would take hours and hours and hours to recreate the design that we made in the intro. So what I wanna show you how to do is actually how to import an entire design and then edit it from there. But before we do that, we're just gonna update these changes. So update all the changes that you made and we're gonna preview them. Then we can exit out of here and just go to the homepage by removing all of this. And we can see those changes on our website. So that is looking pretty good, pretty weird. But basically that is how you edit your website. But we didn't come here for just any website. We came here for a booking, scheduling, appointment setting website. So that's what we're gonna build now. So we can choose from a whole bunch of different designs and we can change the designs as you saw. But I don't recommend changing your design right now. And that's because we wanna put all the raw material on your website first before you start playing with the design. But I just wanted to show you how you could change the design right now if you wanted to. But I actually made my own template that you can modify further for this website. And you can download the link to those templates below in the description. But basically, if you open up a new tab, we can go to that link and we can download a zip file. So I'm just gonna drag that to my desktop and close that. Once I do that, I'm going to exit out of here and then I'm going to go back into Elementor. So edit with Elementor. And now I'm going to go down and scroll down the page all the way until I see this folder right here. Now I'm going to click this folder. Then I'm going to go to my templates and I'm going to upload that zip file. So just upload it right here, import template, click hold and drag it right into this box right here. Now it's going to take a little while to load because it's loading all those images and the text and all the colors and everything like that. And it's also not going to look perfect because we have to change some more settings. And now we have all of the templates that we made right here. And it took us hours and hours, probably 20 hours to make these to make these different templates right here. But obviously you don't need to use this design. It could just be a starting point or you can use any design that you want. All right, so we have our appointment home right here and all we have to do is insert it. Again, it's not gonna look right and we could just press yes but it's going to be a good starting point all right so once we have our template in there there it goes it doesn't look exactly right the colors are off we're going to exit out of all of these other ones and now we have ours the color isn't right and it's not perfect, but it's looking pretty good. This footer here is also wrong, but I'll show you how to do that too. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna update that, and now we're gonna change the colors of the fonts and the buttons and everything so that this looks much better. The first thing that we can do is go over here and then go to site settings. And then for global colors, we're gonna set the primary to these specific hex codes. So a hex code is just a color code. We can just type it in right here. Pound 4A295D. That's the code for that purple. Now for secondary, we can just type it in. Pound 613F75. Again, that's another purple. For text, it's going to be pound 281D2F. And for our accent color, that's going to be pound F8EBEF. All right, so we have some of those colors and some of the things did change, but not all of them. So we have to change a few more things. We can go back and we can scroll up here and we're gonna change the button right here. So we're gonna go to buttons. And right here for button box shadow, that's the shadow under our button. We're gonna do 12 for horizontal. That's gonna move it over. 16 for vertical. We're gonna blur it more at 23 and we're gonna spread it a little bit less at negative seven. All right, we'll keep it that color and we will press 
update because we're all done with that. All right, now we're gonna exit out of here and we're gonna make some more color changes, but in a different spot. And we're also gonna make a few font changes as well. All right, so what we wanna do is we wanna exit out of here. So we just wanna go to our main website and this is looking better, but it's not looking perfect. So what we wanna do is click on customize and then go to global and typography. This is the font. So click on base typography and we're gonna change it. So we can change the base typography to something crazy like rock salt. And that will change all of our fonts to this crazy font, which is maybe pretty cool for some businesses. We're gonna go with something a little bit more subtle. It's called Inter. It's a Google font. There are over 600 Google fonts here. So that's really cool. And for variants, I'm just gonna delete these. So we don't need any variants right here. And for size, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger just so it pops a little bit more. And for line height, which is the space between the lines, I'm gonna increase it a little bit to 1.0. Seven. And that is looking pretty good. The text is looking a little bit better. So now I'm just gonna go back and I'm gonna go to our headings. This is our headings right here. So we're gonna change that a little bit. So I'm gonna go to headings. And for the font family, I want it to be a little bit more spa-like. So I'm gonna type in L and we're gonna choose this one, L Missouri. For the variants, I'm gonna get rid of it. We don't really need those. And for the weight, I'm gonna make it more bold. So I'm gonna go 700 bold. All right, and we're gonna keep this capitalized. So those are the main settings, but now we can go to each of the settings. Heading one is the main heading, so like the biggest font. So let's change some of that. We're gonna make this one bold also. So it's gonna be really bold and look really good. For heading two, we're gonna make that a little bit bigger. So make it 50. And we're also gonna bold that to 700. And we're also gonna change that family to L Missouri. And we're gonna make that bold 700. For our heading three, we're also gonna do the L Missouri. And 32 is great, but we're gonna bold it 700 again. All right, so now if we scroll down, we can see that these have changed and they're actually looking a lot better. Not everything is perfect. Not everything is the right colors. We still have more to go, but it's looking pretty good. So next we can just go back and go back again. And then let's go to the buttons again. So we click on buttons and for our main button color overall for our website, we want it to be white, but the background color to be a different color. So we're gonna change this hex value again, and it's gonna be pound 613F75. For the hover color, this is gonna be white, but the background is going to be pound 4A295D, another purple color. And then for the border, it can be 1111. That means there is a border around it. If you can see that right there, there's a border that's red. So we wanna change that red again to pound 613F75. All right, and the hover border, we're gonna change that also to pound 4A, 29, 5D. All right, and then we're gonna make the radius more. So the radius is the edge right here. So if we go all the way up, it'll be rounded. But if we go all the way down, it'll be really sharp. I'm just gonna put in 100 right here, just so that whatever button size we have, it's gonna be rounded. All right, for button text, again, we're gonna do enter. Size 16, medium 500. We're gonna uppercase all of the letters in here. And for letter spacing, we're gonna do two. So that's gonna give us more space in between the letters. All right, for the padding, which is the distance in between here, we're gonna change that. We're gonna make it a little bit bigger. We're gonna do 22, press tab. 34, whoops, you have to unlock them first right here. So 22, press tab, 34, press tab, 22, press tab and 34. All right, finally, we're gonna go back and we're gonna change the global colors. So this is just one more color to change and click on base color. And for our text, we're just gonna put in 281D2F. For our theme color, we're just gonna put in 613F75. For our link color, we're gonna put in 613F75. For our link hover color, we're gonna put in 4A295D. For our heading color, we're gonna put in 
F7 5. All right, and that should make it look really good. So everything now should all be color coordinated and look really awesome. Obviously, this footer is not doing too well down here because we need to change it. So that's what we're gonna change next. So we're just gonna click on publish and we're gonna exit out of there. So now this is looking really cool. Obviously you can change it however you want, whatever colors you want. It's looking great except for this bottom footer, which we can change by hovering over edit with Elementor and clicking on footer. All right, now we have this in here and we can just exit out of here. And then we can click here and we have a template for the footer. So we have this footer right here and we can just insert it. All right, now that's looking pretty good. So we can just exit out of here. We don't need this and this is our footer. It's looking great. We're gonna update that. Then we're gonna go back to our main website. And now if we go down, we can see we have this beautiful, perfect footer and this page is looking really good. So the next thing I wanna do is do the same thing to our About Us page, but it's gonna go much faster because all of those settings that we just did are gonna be applied to this page. So we're just gonna edit with Elementor and then we're gonna exit out of all of these and then we're gonna click on the folder and go to My Templates and where it says about, we're gonna insert it and press yes. And now our about page is done and it's looking really, really great. So we're gonna update that. And then we can just go back to our main website. And the next page that we're gonna do is our services page. And obviously you can change any of these pages however you want. And I'm gonna show you how to do that later, but we're just setting it up right now. So I'm gonna edit with Elementor, exit out of all of these again go to the folder, go to my templates, find the services page and click insert, press yes. That will get us a beautiful services page with our different services and everything like that. Of course, you can change anything. We're gonna press update. We can preview those changes, exit out of there. This is our services page, that's looking great. We're not gonna have a projects page. Obviously, you can make that yourself. So we're gonna delete that in just a second, but we're gonna have a contact us page. And we can see this contact us page and we can edit with Elementor. We can exit out of all of these, go to the folder, go to my templates, see the contact and insert it and press yes. And we have our contact page that form's not working, which I'm gonna show you how to make it work. And everything is looking really good. Press update. We could preview those changes and just go to contact dash us right here. And we have that contact right there. All right, we can exit out of here. All right, now we can see we have all of our pages, but we have this extra projects page that we don't really need. So how do we get rid of that? It's super easy. All we have to do is go back to our website and then go to pages and we can scroll down and we can see this projects page right here that we don't need. So we're gonna trash it. We can also see the sample page that we don't really need. So we're gonna trash that also. Then we're gonna go to our trash, which is right here. And we're gonna mark them both off by clicking on this and and delete permanently and apply. Now when we go back to our website, we're not gonna see that projects page there and it's looking really good. But right now it says roofing services on our website now because we imported a roofing service website, but we don't want it to say that obviously, so how do we change that? And that is super easy. All we have to do is click on customize right here. And then after we click customize, we can click on header right here. And then we can go to site identity. Now we're gonna be doing your logo a little bit later, but I just wanna show you how to change that site title. So I'm gonna change mine to make a website, but you would put in your business name right here. And then your tagline would be a description of what you do. Like if you're a roofing service, maybe your best local roofing service. If you're a plumber, maybe plumber from Los Angeles. I'm just gonna put in learn how to make a website. And then I'm gonna click on publish and now we can exit out of there. So the next thing that we wanna do is we can see this get a free estimate, but maybe we want people to contact us, have that as a contact button that really stands out instead of this button right here. So how do we do that? So that's pretty easy. All we have to do is click on customize, then go to header, then go to primary menu. All right, now we wanna uncheck hide last item menu on mobile because we're gonna get rid of this contact us and put it here but we want to show on the mobile. All right, so for our button text, I'm gonna say contact us. And for our button link, it's gonna be the link to our contact us page. So if we open up a new tab and go to our website and then click on the contact us page, we can see this link right here. So we can just click it and copy it and exit out of there. And so now our button link 
is going to be that. So now when we click on this, it'll go to that contact us page. Once we do that, we're going to change the colors of it because we want it to be that purple. So for colors, we can click on that. And for our text color, we're going to keep that as white. But for our background color, we're going to again change that to a purple. So we can change any of the colors right here if we wanted to, but we're going to change it right here, 613F75. And then for our hover color, we're also going to change that. We're going to make this white right here. And for the background color, we're going to change it again to 4A295D. So a little bit darker purple when you hover over it. All right, then we're going to go to typography. And everything there is looking good. So we're going to go to border. And we're actually going to make it zero because we don't want any border right here. And that's looking awesome. Now we have a problem where there are two contact us buttons. So we're going to go back and we're going to go back again and we're going to go to menus. Then we're going to click primary menu and we're going to see this contact us button and we're just going to remove it. So now we have home about services and contact us and it's looking really good. We're going to click publish. We're going to exit out of there. We're going to check to see if our button works, which it does. And now people can contact us and that's a really cool call to action. So let's go back to our homepage. So the website is coming along great, but there's a couple more things that we need to do. If we scroll down here, we don't have that appointment scheduling plugin right here because we haven't downloaded it yet. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to download and configure it. All right. So to do that, let's just go into the back end of our website. And all we have to do is click on plugins right here and then click add new. I'm going to exit out of all of this stuff right here because we don't really need it. All right. And the plugin that I'm looking for is called Salon Booking. S a L O N B O O K I N G. Now, obviously you don't need to be a salon to use this plugin. It could literally be used by anyone. It's just called salon booking. So we see this plugin right here, the salon booking, it has 7,000 active installs and it has four and a half out of five stars. So it's looking really good. So we're just going to install that one and press install. Now, before we activate it, I want to go to more details because I want to look up something and that's Basically, how do we use this plugin? So we can scroll down and try to find it and we can click on installation and we can go down and see how to install it, which we already did. We can go to FAQ, go down and see all the FAQs and we can go to screenshots and see all of the different screenshots of what it looks like. So this is super helpful if you're downloading a different plugin and you just want to know how certain things work, how certain plugins work but we can exit out of there and we can activate this plugin. All right, so we're gonna press allow and continue. So they've created a few different pages for us. We don't really need all the stuff that it's offering, but obviously you can take a deep dive into all these different things. It's just a little bit too much for us. We wanna make it super simple. All we're gonna do is click on this link over here and they give us a calendar to see when all of our bookings or availabilities and everything like that. But what we wanna do is we wanna go down to the settings and we wanna change some of these settings. So we're gonna go down and say, what's your salon name? I'm just going to say relax spa salon contact email. I'm just going to put in my email address and then salon phone number. I'm just going to put in my phone number. All right. It's going to ask us for our address. Again, you don't need to be a salon to do this. We can go down and it's going to ask us the date format and the time format. I'm going to change the time format to be like this instead of the other way. For my date format, I think I'm gonna change that to this one right here. Then I'm gonna keep on scrolling down. We don't need to enable assistant. That's if we wanna select which assistant is gonna be helping us on our checkout. And do we wanna do SMS? Do we wanna get notifications on our phone? I'm not gonna set that up right now. So all of this is looking good. We can change the messaging for the text message if we want. And we can remind the appointment to the client an hour before through email and a whole bunch of other settings. All right, the next thing that we need to do is change the style of it. So it goes with our style and our colors. So we're gonna update these settings right here and we're gonna click on style. Then we're gonna go down and we're gonna change it to small because that's just what's gonna fit on our website. So just click on small. Obviously you can choose whatever you want. And we're gonna go down and we're gonna enable custom colors. So background color, that's fine. We're gonna change this main color and you can go like this and it'll change to any of the colors that you want. This is a little bit different than the hex code, but you can always type hex to RGB and you can get in this 
right here. So ours is 97, the purple 63, 117 for that purple. And for our text color, we're gonna change that to, we're gonna change that to 40, 29, 47. So that dark purple. All right, then we're gonna update our settings and then we're gonna go to the checkout. So here we can scroll down a little bit and we're gonna enable guest checkout and enable force guest checkout. What these two do is that it makes sure that the user doesn't need to make an account and that no account will be made for them. All right, and we can update settings. The next thing that we're gonna do is go to payments and we can scroll down and maybe we didn't wanna attach a payment. Maybe we're just like a consultant and we just want to book our consulting or it's just an initial appointment that didn't have any payments associated with it. Then over here, we can hide prices. So we didn't need to attach any prices to it. All right, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna to keep it as it is because we are gonna have some prices to our service. But if you didn't wanna have any prices or the meeting was free or it was just meeting with your friends or something, then you would obviously hide prices. So we can update those settings. And now we need to add different services to it. So if we go to salon services, different services right here, but we can mark them all off and move to trash and apply. And then we can go to the trash if we want, check them all off, delete permanently and apply. All right, once that's all deleted, we can add a service. So this is basically just like an option. If you only had one option, like you did consulting, you just put consulting and you'd make the price zero. And again, just like we did in the settings, you would hide price. But I'm gonna say hot stone massage. And then I'm gonna say the price is $50. Then I'm gonna press publish and I'm gonna add a couple more services just in the same way. So just click on add service. All right, so now if we click on our services over here, we can see that we have all of our services right here. We have all four of them right here. And now we need to get all of this on the homepage. So let's go ahead and visit our homepage. And if we scroll down, we're gonna actually see it right here. Now, why is that? How did the website know to put it in right here? And I'm gonna show you that right now. So if we click on edit with Elementor, and this is how also you'll get it on any page that you want. We're gonna see this left square bracket, then salon with a capital S, and then a forward slash in a right square bracket. So anytime you type in that, and we just made this as a heading, so literally drag in a heading, or you can drag in text, and all you do is you would remove this square bracket, salon, forward slash, square bracket. And that is the code to insert the form. And we can make this heading text smaller by making it an H3 or an H4, or we could have just dragged in a text editor and done the same thing and put it in there. And we can center it to make it look better. And then if we update it, there should be two in here right now. So we're gonna preview the changes now. Whoops, I actually made a mistake. It's not a capital S, the S is lowercase and that's why it didn't work. So make that a lowercase S, update it and now we can preview it and it should work. All right, so now we have both of those uh, booking appointment calendars in there right now. We have two of them, it was a lowercase S, so don't do an uppercase S and then it'll work perfectly. All right, so we can go back and I'm just gonna remove this one because we don't really need it. So I'm gonna press delete. This should be a lowercase. It's just not a lowercase because the style right now, if we go to style and we go to typography and we go to transform, we can transform it to normal and that would make it lowercase, which is the correct way it should be. All right, so you can put this code right here on any of the pages, making sure that the S is lowercase and it'll work on any page. Anywhere you put that is where that form will be. But we don't need to update that. We can obviously update any of this text here. We don't need to update that. We're just gonna exit out of there and leave without updating anything because it already works. And we have the form here. Let's check to make sure, see if it works. We can choose anything that is available. We can choose our time. Of course, you can customize the times when it's available and everything like that. Then we can choose which treatment that we want and we can either attach prices or not attach prices to them. And we can choose whatever we want. Let's say we want a hot stone massage and 
go to the next step. We could enter in our first name, last name, email, phone number, and address. But if we don't want all of these, we don't need to have all of them on there. So let me show you actually how to get rid of some of these things. So we can go back into the dashboard and we can go back to salon and then settings. And then we can go to checkout and scroll down. And here is all of the options of what we can include and what we can not include. So I want the first name, but I don't really care about the last name. So I'm gonna hide on checkout and hide on booking. Email, I do care about. Phone number, maybe I care about. Address, I don't care about. So I'm gonna hide that too. And then you can add more fields right here and customize that, but I'm just gonna update settings. Then I'm gonna go back to the front end of the website and I'm going to check out once again. Got our hot stone massage, next step. Again, we can hide those prices if we wanted to. And then now it says first name, email address, and phone number. All right, once we do that, we can do next step. And here is my booking summary. You can change any of this by clicking on this because you're the admin. Enter in a discount code or not. You can leave a message, see you soon and then you can finalize. All right, we get our booking number and you as the website owner will get something that emails you and tells you that they have made an appointment with you. All right, so we can check our email and we can see as the admin that they have made it, we can see their phone number, their email address and their message, see you soon. So that is super awesome. Every once in a while, this email might go into spam, but you just have to go to your spam folder, mark it as not spam, and you should be good to go. All right, so we can exit out of there, but really the form isn't perfect. If we scroll down a little bit, we're gonna see that this isn't our font right here. There's a little bit of extra space down all right here, and it's not looking super perfect. The problem is, is that it requires a little bit of code, a little bit of CSS to make it right? So it's a little bit advanced, but I want to make it perfect. So I've written out the code for you to copy and paste. It's in the description below. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to customize and you can just copy and paste this code to really just make this look perfect. All right. So we're going to go to customize right here and then we're going to scroll down and where it says additional CSS, we're going to paste in some code right here. And obviously if you don't want to do it, it's perfectly okay. This is just some advanced extra homework if you are really just want to go above and beyond and make it look perfect. So again, it's in the description below. So just copy and paste it. So I'm going to paste it all in there and it's going to change some things on our form. It's not going to look like this. It's only looking like this because there's not enough room but we've changed the font over here and that's what this does. It says that the H2 font should be L Masiri. We changed some other font to enter like right here. We've made the margin or the spacing zero on top. So there's not as much spacing right here. And you can again, play with these to see what it does. If we put in a hundred, we can see that it's a lot more spacing. If we put in 10, do that. We can actually do negative numbers. We could do negative. 10 or 100 and maybe that looks better but i'll keep it at zero and we just changed a lot of the different margins here so that it has less space it's not as big and we've changed the border radius for the button to 30 so it looks better if it was zero it would be like that 30 it looks like that so it looks like everything else and we remove some more spacing by putting margin zero, margin is the spacing. So we can click publish that and we can exit out of there. And if we scroll down now, we can see that it doesn't take up so much space. The button's rounded, everything is looking much better. We have that font in there that is our font. So everything is looking really great. All right, now that we have that form done, we're actually gonna do the contact page. So we're gonna put a form on the contact page so that people can contact us. So let's go to the contact us page and we can see that we can't see anything right here. There's supposed to be a form right here so we can edit with Elementor. And if we go over here and we click on this, this is a WP forms widget. So how you would get this in here or put it anywhere else, you would go up here and you type in form and we would see WP forms. So we see WP forms. We can choose either of these, but we can click, hold and drag and put the form wherever we want. And then we would select a form. So we'd select the contact form. The contact form is already made for us. So it would put it in right there. It would take all of our colors that we had and all of that looks really great.
So we're gonna delete this one actually, and we're gonna do the same thing with this one. Take this, go here, make it the contact form. All right, so how do we make this contact form though, right here? Let's update that and let's preview it on our website. We can take off all of this right here and exit out of there. And now we can see this contact form in here. It looks really good. It's all lined up. Everything looks great. We can put in our first name, email, phone number, subject and message, and then that will get sent to us. So if a user puts that in, it'll get sent to us right there. It's looking pretty awesome, but how do we build this right here? How do we get it so that we can actually insert it? What we do is we can go to our dashboard and there's a plugin called WP Forms. So there's already a contact form here, but there's already a contact form right here. If we wanted a new one, we would just click add new. So let's say we wanted a new one. We'd click add new and then we would type in new form and maybe we would do it as a simple contact form. So we can click on that. And now it's going to say first name, last name, email, comment or message. We don't have a lot of space on our website. So what we can do is we can click on this and we can go to format and we could just make it simple. So name and then email address and then comment. So maybe that's good or maybe we want more fields. So we click on fields and add field and maybe we want their phone number. So we click hold and drag and then we can change this by clicking on it and saying phone number and they can put in their phone number right there. If we don't want that, of course, we can delete it and press okay. We can click any of these and we can change the settings. We can make it required. We can go to advanced options. We can make it small or medium or large. And then once we've added all the fields that we want to add like drop downs or check boxes or emails or anything like that, then we go to settings and notifications. So this first one is asking who do we send the form to? So we want this to be our email address. And what do we want the subject to be? So maybe new contact message will be the subject that it sends to us. Who do we want it to be from? So it's gonna be from your business. So I'm gonna say it's from Tyler. And then from email, we want this to be our admin email. So we're gonna say, we could just put in our email address or you can use it as the admin that was there. And then who do we reply to? So we have smart tags here. So if we go show smart tags, it's gonna be the email that they put in. So you can press email and now put in this code right here, which will be their email. And then what do we want the message to be that sends to us? We want it to be all the fields. So everything that they filled out, we want to have in our message. So as long as it's like this, it should work perfect. We can press save. And now when we go back to our website, and go to the contact us page. We're not gonna see it change here because we didn't edit this one, we made a new one. But of course you can edit this one if you wanted to. We're gonna edit with Elementor. It's gonna have this in here, we can click on it and then we can choose that new form that we made. All right, and that will show up just like that. Obviously we need to format it and do it a little bit better than this and it'll look better once it's published. We can see it'll look much better, it'll look like that but we do have options to hide this back in the contact form settings, just like we did this one. So I'm gonna keep it on this one because it does look much better. All right, then we're gonna update that and people can now fill it out and it'll email you and you can begin a conversation with them. All right, so I'm just gonna go back to the homepage and it's all great to edit different pages, but what if we wanna add our own page? What if we want a different page? What if we want a gallery page, for instance? Making a page is super simple. All we have to do is go back into the back end and then go to pages and we can click add new. We can exit out of here and we're gonna add a new page called gallery, G-A-L-L-E-R-Y, gallery. Or this could be FAQs, about, service, contact, anything that you want, but I'm just gonna do a gallery page and I'm gonna click on publish and I'm gonna publish it. Once I do that, I'm gonna edit with Elementor up here. And now what we could do is we could build this page. We can click on here and add different sections and drag anything. I'm gonna show you how to do all of that later, but I think it's a much better idea to start off as a template. So I'm gonna click this S right here. And from here, we can add any page that we want. So I'm gonna go free. And maybe we like this one as our gallery page, or maybe we can search up here for gallery and we can see some galleries that we like. 
Maybe we like this one right here. That one's pretty cool. But maybe we want it to be a different page. It could be any page that we want. So I'm just gonna click on here. Maybe I like this page. I'm gonna go with this services page here. Maybe this could be our gallery. Click on here and then I'm gonna import this template. Once it's done importing, it's gonna take on all the style of our website that we made. So it's gonna have the different colors, the different buttons, everything like that. It's gonna look pretty good. And of course, we can change this however we want. We can add to any of this. We could subtract from any of this. Real quick, we could just put in, this is a gallery right here. But we do see a problem, and that problem is that this header and this logo, which we'll change later, is supposed to be see-through. This page is supposed to be pushed up all the way to the top so that you can see through it. So I'm just gonna update this page, and we're gonna fix that problem. I'm gonna preview it, exit out of here. And what we can do is we can press edit page right here and we can go down and where it says transparent header we can enable the transparent header so once we do that we can press update and then we can preview that page in a new tab and now that is looking really good now we can see that transparent header but we do have another problem also, and that's if we go to the home page, there's no way to get to our gallery page. It's not up here. So we need a way for us to get back to the gallery page. So how do we do that? Again, it's super easy. All we have to do is click on customize, and then down here, go to menus, and then click primary menu. And then this is our primary menu. We see the home about services. We don't see the contact because that's a special button that we did before, but we can add an item and maybe we want to add that gallery right there. So maybe we want it to be gallery then services. So we click hold and drag and now it'll be home about gallery services. We like that, we click publish, we exit out of there. And now we have our new gallery page that we can go ahead and click on right here. And now we can access it from the home page, and it's looking super perfect, really great. If we decide, actually, we don't really like that gallery page, I actually wanna get rid of it. That's super easy also. We can go back into the dashboard, and we can go to pages, and we can find that gallery page, and we just click trash. If we really wanna delete it, we can go back to our trash, and we can delete permanently. All right, now we can go back to our website and that gallery will not be there. All right, the next thing that I'm gonna show you how to do is how to edit this entire website. I showed you a preview before, but I wanna show you the 15 things that you need to know in order to make any website out there. So here are those 15 things. We're gonna learn how to change your image, change your text, change your buttons, change spacing, insert sections, add a heading, add text, add button, add spacing, undo, redo, columns, icon box, duplicate, duplicate sections, and how to make it responsive so it works on your tablets, phone, computer, it works on every single device that there is. It might seem like a lot, but it is super easy. All right, so editing our website, we can go to any page that we want right here, and then just press edit with Elementor. So if we're on the about page, edit with Elementor, service page, edit with Elementor, contact page, edit with Elementor, we're on this home page, so we can just edit with Elementor. All right, so here's our list. Change image, change text, change button, change spacing. So this is about just changing what's already there, and then this is about like adding things to it. And this is some more like advanced tips and tricks. So let's go and do it. How do we change an image? We have this background image here. So how do we change this background image? It's super easy. All we have to do is click on this entire section here and go to style. And then we see this background image. There are some other images overlaid on this background image, but we don't need to worry about that right now. This is how you choose a background image. So maybe we wanna choose something else, we click on it. We can get free images from Pixabay, which is cool, copyright free images. We can choose images from our library, or we can upload our own images. I'm gonna choose free images from Pixabay. Maybe I will choose, I don't know, spa. All right, we wanna find an image that maybe is a little bit darker, that is spa-like, maybe this image right here, and we can save and insert. It'll download and it'll insert into our website, and now that lady was removed and this image is here. 
Obviously, the colors don't really go that well and it doesn't look that great. A trick though is to use a background overlay. So what we can do is we can scroll down here and go to background overlay and we can overlay it with the color. We need this to be lighter so that our text pops or we need our text to stand out more, one or the other, but we're just gonna make this lighter so we can click on it and then we can choose a color for it by clicking on this one, maybe making it white and now our text is popping more. We can change the opacity. One would be completely white and then zero would be completely see-through. So we can play with that and that pops out a little bit more. It doesn't look fantastic, but it looks a little bit better. One of the coolest things that you can do on the website is you can undo. And all you have to do is press Command Z if you're on a Mac or Control Z if you're on a PC and that will take you back in time as if you never made the mistake. All right, I bet my mom wishes she had a Command Z. That's just a joke. <laughs> My mom loves me. All right, so right there, we learned how to change an image. We also learned how to undo, but we didn't really learn how to redo. So how do we redo? That's interesting. Let's see, we can go over here to our history and we can see now that we have made some changes. So now we can actually, if we decided that we do like that, we can go forward in time and back in time, just like a time machine, which my dad wished he had. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've learned how to undo, redo, maybe not in the order that I thought we would do it, but nevertheless, we got it done. The next thing that we're gonna do is change text. How do we change text? It's super easy. All we have to do is click on any text right here and we can actually change it here or we can change it up here. So we can just click on something, for example, this, and we can change it here, change text. All right, we can scroll down and we can change this text here. Enjoy a relaxing night instead of afternoon. We can go down here and change any of this text here just by clicking on it. But sometimes we also don't just wanna change the content, we wanna change the style of the text too or what the text looks like. And that's easily done by clicking on this little style tab up there. So all we have to do is click on any text we have, click on this style tab. So click on text, click on any style, and then we can change any of the colors. So we can change this. Maybe we want this to be a white. That looks pretty good. Or maybe we want to press control or command Z to undo that. So bam, we learn how to change the text. How do we change our buttons? So we want to change the buttons. We easily just click on it and this is all the content in here. So instead of saying view our services, it can say contact us and we've changed that. Where does it link to? Well, we can have it linked to the contact us page by starting to type in contact and then we can see the contact us page right there. All right, and then we can scroll down and scroll up and go to style and we can change the font size, the typography. We can make it really big or really small. Again, we could press Command or Control Z if we wanna undo those things. We could change the text color of the button, the background color of the button, the border radius, which is you know how sharp it is, the padding or all the space in between the button. We can also go to advanced and change the spacing. So the margin and the padding, that has to do with spacing. So if we put 32 on the right side, it's gonna give us 32 more pixels of space on the right. If we put 100 on the top, it's gonna give us 100 more pixels of space on the top and so on. We're just gonna undo that though. And that is how you change the button. There's a ton of different options there. You can discover them yourself. So change buttons, we're all done with that. Change spacing. This is one of the most important things on the entire website. So the spacing, the spacing will make or break a website. You see how much space there is here? It's like breathing room for all of the fonts, all of the content and everything like that. How do we control the space so there's more more or less space here. It's super easy. All we have to do is click on this entire thing right here, this entire section, and go to advance, and we can see that there's 
a bunch of padding or spacing on the top. So we can change that. Maybe we want it to be 100 and we see that that all gets shifted up and maybe to us that looks better. Maybe 200 looks better. And then for the bottom, we have the spacing here on the bottom. Maybe we want that to be 100 also and that will give us some more space here. The difference between padding and margin is padding is on the inside where margin is on the outside. So if we unlink these values and do 100 margin, it won't do it here, but it'll push this away. So we can say 100 here, and it just pushes it away, where if we do 200 here, that will actually increase here. Again, we can press Control Z or Command Z to undo all of those terrible, terrible changes. So you can do spacing for anything. We can click on this right here and go to Advanced and change the spacing here. We can click on this section here and go to advanced and change the spacing here. We can click on this and go to advanced and change the spacing here. We can do it on this contact button and we can change the spacing. We could do it on different columns. So we click on this and we can go to advanced and we can change the spacing right there. So anything that you can click on practically will give you this advanced in order to change the spacing. So change spacing, we all know how to do that now. So now we're getting to the part where we learned how to change all of the stuff on our website but how do we actually add new things to the website? You don't want to just copy someone's design all the time or just change and rearrange things even though that is a good way to start off. Sometimes we want to create our own section so that's what we're gonna do. And sometimes the best way to create your own section is to copy Apple. <laughs> just kidding. But is to copy something that you get inspiration from. Obviously it's not gonna be a direct copy but sometimes it's nice to go around different websites and see what's out there there and say, hey, can I put that on my own website? So how would we make this? Let's try to make this. Let's try to think about this. What is this? We have an image. We have an image right here, which is just a single column. We have this text down here that might probably be a headline. We have this extra text down here, which is just regular text. And if we scroll down, we can see these three different boxes right here. So we need probably three different columns. That's what I'm seeing here. And we need some icons, some text, some headings, different things like that. How can we recreate something like that if we wanted to? So let's first add a new section that is one column. So if we go here, let's go all the way to the bottom and let's just add it right here. Let's add one column. So we look at this one column. Okay. Look at ours one column. All right. That looks pretty good. The next thing that we can do is really up to us. This right here, is this an image or is it a background? And that's really up to you. That's up for you to decide. It doesn't really matter. As my mom says, there's more than one way to skin a cat. So I'm gonna make it a background. So I'm gonna go here and I'm just gonna click on this entire section. I'm gonna go to style. What does this guy look like? He looks like a smart dude. I'm going to go to classic and click on image and just type in after I click free images, from Pixabay, I'm gonna type in smart dude. And we have no results, so maybe smart guy? Smart guy, all right, let's find a smart guy. We want the images to be wide. How about just guy? We're not finding anything. We're gonna do a horizontal orientation. And this canoe looks good to me, I'm feeling it. So we'll save and insert. So that's gonna insert it right here, but there's no space right here. And again, we can tackle this two ways. What we can do is we can either click on this and then go to advanced over here and add some padding spacing or an easier way might be to drag in some spacing. So click on this and then click and hold and drag spacer and just make some space with this guy. So that looks pretty cool. If we wanna reposition this image, we can click on it and we can go to style and then it says position. What do we want? We want it to be maybe center, center. Oh, nope. We definitely don't want it to be center, center. Top center, maybe. There we go. Or maybe we want it to be left center, top left. There you go, that's pretty good. For the size, I like to make it cover. That's always the way to go, in my opinion. That cover will make sure it goes all the way across, but it will sometimes crop the top and bottom or crop it where it sees fit, but it'll show you as much of the picture as possible. All right, so we got that in there. We'll go back to the genius bar. What do we need here? We need another section underneath with uh, these two right here. So we can go back and 
we can add another section and it's just a single column and it is a heading so we click hold and drag that in there and we want to center that heading and we want to put some inspirational Instagram garbage on there something like you do you and be inspired something like that and then maybe we don't like this font right here so we can go to style and typography and uh, what are they using I don't know but maybe we want to use Montserrat Montserrat there we go that's good maybe we want to change the color so we go up here and we change the color maybe we want it to be black or nearly black all right but obviously this has a little bit more space up here so we need to get a little bit more space by clicking on this and then going to advanced and we can choose margin or padding so i'm going to choose margin top maybe 50. that looks pretty good that looks about right and maybe we want this to be a little bit thinner so let's go back to style and go to typography and for the weight we want it to be a little bit lighter but not that light like that yeah there we go and of course we can change the size of it if we want it to be bigger or smaller maybe like that and we could go back here and we can see maybe we want to copy all this right here because i'm too lazy to type it right now so we go like that and then we click on this and we click hold and drag it underneath and then we just paste in that text let's paste it here though paste it in here we click on this because we don't want to copy all of that formatting so we could just paste it there go back to visual highlight it all and then go to style and we can center it and we can see that this text doesn't go all the way across because it looks bad when text just goes all the way across your screen and it's super hard to read so we want to contain the text a little bit more so that's super easy to do all we have to do is go back here and ours goes all the way across looks terrible but what we can do is we can click on this section and then go to advanced if we want and we can give a little bit of margin to the left or right side so we can do it just like this so right side maybe we'll do 200 and then left side we can do 200 and that's a little bit too much so we'll do 150 and 150 and now that text is contained and it looks a little bit better their text is a little smaller so we go back here and we go to typography and we change the size a little bit maybe we want it to be like that that looks pretty good so now we can see that and that looks perfect the next thing that we're going to do is get those three boxes in here just like apple did so we see this apple has chat call email and maybe this button down here that you can see if i get out of the way right there maybe we'll do that so how do we do all of that super easy let's go back to our website and let's add a new section that new section is a three column section and once we do that we can go up here and we can search for like an icon box so this icon box we can click it and then we can see it has an icon the heading and then the text so this is the icon heading text that's perfect so you can easily change the icon by going to the icon library we can type in like phone or something and give it a phone there and we can insert we can also change the color of this icon by going to style and changing the color of it right here the primary colors and then of course you can go back to content and we can say you know phone support or something we can obviously change the text of it and if we like this one then we can duplicate it just by right clicking and duplicating it and then click holding and dragging to these other columns right here and now we have that it looks a little too close to me so i'll click the entire section and go to advanced and then unlink these values and put 50 maybe 100 pixels of space a little bit too much 80 pixels of space on there and that looks pretty good let's see they have a little bit more equal distance right here so maybe i was right with my 50. all right so they have a chat call and email so we have a phone and then maybe here we have a message and then here we have email so email all right then we would change all of these voice chat email change this and there you go you have your three sections right there and we can go back if we want to and we can definitely change this typography if we want we don't want it to have that same typography again want it to be montserrat or something and we want to change the color and there you go with a little bit of effort we have duplicated this maybe we want this button to be right there so that is a single column right there so it's just a button underneath single column put it in there there click here 
drag in a button, make that button center, and then you can change all of the button style and everything here by changing the background color. Maybe we want it to be that apple bluish. Maybe for the border radius, we want it to be solid, but then put zero so that there's no border around it. Maybe for the box shadow, we don't really want a box shadow very much there, so we can make that zero. And now that's looking a little bit closer to this. It's not looking perfect. There needs to be more space and we need to do a few things to it, but basically that is it. So there we go, we can click on it, we can change it to say get software help or whatever we want. And there you go, we've pretty much recreated the Apple website right here or part of the Apple website and we did it pretty fast. It's not perfect, we could definitely spend more time with it and make it a lot better. And again, we can also undo it. So just Command Z or Control Z, we can get rid of all of those changes to step back in time or we can go to our history right here go all the way down and go back to when we started to edit and that will bring us all the way back let's see how we're doing on our list so we learned how to insert an entire section how to add a heading add text add a button add spacing we learned about columns in that icon box we learned to duplicate things and now we're going to learn to duplicate a style and for it to be responsive how do we make it perfect for those devices like your cell phone tablet and computer so we're going to exit out of this let's say we change the style right here we went here and we really did like a different font so we went here and we said you know what i don't like this font i want something crazy i want rock salt rock salt to me that's the way to be all right and then we said man that's just perfect i love that and we did all this stuff to it we also changed the color so we went to text color and we said you know what white is the right color for me and we wanted to duplicate all of this work that we did to somewhere else. So all we have to do is right click and press copy and then go down here and right click and paste style. That style is going to get pasted there and all of that work that we did, we don't have to redo. But again, we can go back to our history and we can say, you know what? I like it the way it is. I don't need to worry about making any mistakes because I can always undo. And there we have it. All right, so we've learned how to duplicate the style to save you a whole bunch of time. So we're all done with that. The last thing I wanna show you is how to make your website responsive so that it works on all of your devices, your phones, your tablets, everything like that. And it looks perfect for those small screens. All right, so the way we do that is we go over here and we click on mobile or tablet or whatever you want. So I'm gonna click on mobile and now we can see what the website would look like if it was on a mobile device. Obviously that form will be in there, but do we like everything that it looks like? And honestly, it looks pretty good. There's not too much because it's already has all the settings that it needs in there. But let's say something was bad. Let's say we go here and we go to style and then typography, we can see this little mobile icon. That means it's only changing on mobile devices and not your desktop. So we can make it bigger or smaller. Maybe we want it to be a little bit bigger. We can also click on the entire section and go to advanced and maybe there's too much padding up here so we can reduce that size a little bit. I'm just gonna keep it as it is because it actually looks good on the mobile phone. So after we do that, we can update it and now those changes will only show for the mobile website, the website that people see on their phones and it won't affect the desktop version of your website. If we go back to the desktop version, it won't affect that at all. All right, so now we're done with the 15 things that we needed to make practically any website out there. So we can mark that off. And now we need to do the last two things for our website. So we're just gonna preview this website and exit out of here and go back to the homepage actually. And we can see that something's not right and that is the logo. So that's the last thing that we're gonna change. Then I'm gonna show you how to back up your hard work and then we are done. There are many different ways to change 
change your logo. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create a logo and then we're gonna insert it in here. We're also gonna do this little fave icon up here it's called. So this is an icon that we can change and we can make it custom so that's super cool. All right, so what I wanna do is I wanna open up a new tab. Go to photop.com, P-H O T O P E A dot C O M and press enter. This is really cool. It is a Photoshop duplicate, but it's free and it's online, so it's super awesome. All we have to do is click on new project, and the new project is fine. We could put in logo here and we can press create. All right, but now we need an icon or we need something here, so I don't want to make it myself, even though I could. I wanna download that from somewhere else, so I'm just gonna to go to flaticon.com. And let's exit out of there, and we can search for icons. I'm gonna search for a lotus flower. And up here on filters, we can make sure that they're all free, so only the free ones. And then we can scroll down and we can find any lotus flower that we want. I think mine's on the second page somewhere. And there it is, that's the one that I want. Now I wanna save this as an SVG. That's saving this icon using math, so no matter how big you blow it up, it won't lose its quality because all of these curves are based on math and coordinates instead of an actual image. So we're just gonna click save and we're gonna do the free download and we're gonna exit out of there. It's downloaded, we can drag it to our desktop or we can go to photo P and just drag it in right there. And now that shows up. Then I'm gonna change the color of this and I'm gonna do that by double clicking right here and then changing each of these layers. So I'm gonna click on this one, double click, and then I'm gonna type in that purple color which was 613F75 and press OK. And then type it in here again, 613F75 and press OK. All right, so that made it that purple color. We can press Command or Control S to save, I believe, or go to File and Save Smart Object. Once it's saved, it's gonna update this right here and we have this nice purple icon. What we need to do is we need to crop it to a certain dimension, 512 by 512, in order for it to accept it right here. So what we can do is we can use a crop button, and instead of free, we're going to do fixed size, and we're going to do 512 by 512, and we're going to press enter, and then we're going to press enter, and that's gonna crop it right there. So that's looking pretty perfect. We can reposition this a little bit, but that is looking pretty good. I usually don't get that lucky. If you need to transform it, you can click on it and then go to transform controls and then hold shift, because if you don't, it's gonna get all wonky. Hold shift while you're resizing it and now I'll resize it proportionately and we can resize it just like that and press enter and then we can move this around. You can also use your arrow keys to move around. And what we want to do is want to get rid of this background. So get rid of this background so that it's transparent because you see how this is transparent. And then we can go to file and export as a PNG and it's 512 and 512. We're going to save that. That's gonna download our logo. Actually, this is the fave icon, so we should have renamed it, but just know that that is the fave icon that's gonna go up here. Now we need to do our logo. So I'm just gonna click off of it by selecting this marquee tool, click off of it, and then go back to crop. Now instead of fixed, I'm gonna say free, and that's gonna make a bounding box around here. I'm just gonna click hold and drag this out and then press enter and that's gonna give us more space right here. Then I'm gonna use some text and now we have a new text layer. I'm gonna start typing, I'm gonna type in relax spa and then I'm gonna double click it to highlight it and I'm gonna increase that font size. It only increases to 150 so I'm actually gonna just type in 200 here or maybe even 400 and then click hold and drag it, that's a little bit too big. So maybe back to 300, 250 perhaps, and then click hold and drag it to that right spot. I'm gonna change this text color to not black, but to that other purpley color. So that is again, 613F75 and press OK. All right, once that's done, we need to change the font. So this also has all the Google fonts. So we'll type in El Masiri. I bet you I'm saying that wrong. I'm gonna get 9,000 comments on it, okay? And then do that. And now it's a little bit smaller. So maybe we can go 300 with that. Oh, we gotta highlight it first, 300. 
that's looking pretty good. Maybe 350 even if we're lucky. Nope, 320. All right, give it a little bit of space. Maybe we'll make this a little bit smaller. So we'll click on this, whoops, click on the pointer, click on this spa right here, and then hold shift and grab the edge and let's make it a little bit smaller. It's a little bit too big for me. Relax spa, that's looking good. Press enter. Now we're gonna recrop the whole thing by clicking on this marquee tool and clicking on the crop and then we're just gonna crop it in as close as we can. All right, once we do that, we can press enter. That looks pretty good. We're gonna file and export it as a PNG. We wanna do PNG because PNG has transparency. So that's looking pretty good and we're gonna save it. That's gonna be our logo one. So this is our fave icon, this is our logo one. We're gonna exit out of here. We're gonna go back to our website. We're gonna to go to customize, then header, then site identity, and we're gonna remove the logo. Then we're gonna select a logo. We're gonna upload files and we're gonna select that logo one. Then we're gonna press select and we're gonna skip cropping. We don't need to crop. That's gonna put it in way too big. 190 looks perfect and great and crisp. And then we're gonna upload our site icon. So we're gonna select our site icon, upload files, drag in that logo. It's exactly 512 by 512, so it should select it perfectly. And now we're gonna see that little cool icon up there that lets us know that that's our site and this photo P lets us know that that's the photo P site. So it's super cool. Once we do that, we're gonna publish and we're gonna exit out of there. All right, now we have that really crisp, clean logo and we have it on all of our pages and our pages are looking super good and everything is looking perfect. We can click on that logo to go back to our homepage. We can exit out of there. Thank you very much photo P. We can exit out of this and we are practically done. The last thing that I like to do is back up all of my hard work by getting a plugin that will back it up. So let's do it. So we can go into the dashboard and then go to plugins and then click add new. Then we can search for a plugin called all in one migration, all in one migration. All right. And this is the best backup plugin that there is 3 million activations four and a half out of five with 6,500 reviews. We could just install that now and then click activate and that will activate the plugin and then we should see it on the left side. So we see it all in one WP migration. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna export it out to a file and it's gonna prepare our export it's gonna download everything off of our website so that we actually have it ourselves. All right, and then you would click and you would download it right here. So that will download to my computer. We can close this now. And what we can actually do is we can click on backups and we can see the backup also right here. So we can create a label to it. We can say first version done. All right, so that's our label for it. We have our first version done. All of our work is saved. We can always go back to this. All we have to do is click this restore button and it'll restore it here. So you can imagine you can have a few different backups here, different points on your website, and then you can just restore them as needed. So I'm actually gonna exit out of here. I'm gonna delete this backup because I don't want people from the internet downloading it. So I'm just gonna delete it. But that is how you would back up your website. We're just gonna visit the homepage one last time. And we've learned how to do so many things. We've learned how to make this logo, this entire website, how to import templates. We've learned how to make this really cool booking appointment form. If we scroll down, we learn how to create this entire footer and edit this footer. We've learned how to edit all of these different pages, how to put in pages, how to delete pages. We've learned how to set up the contact form. We've learned so many things and we did it all step by step with no steps skipped. The last thing that I wanna do is just go up here and log out. It's an optional step. I like to do it and then we can go back to our website and we can view the website as the visitor would view it. Of course, if you wanted to log back in, you just go forward slash WP dash admin and you can log back in like that. But we are all done. Please remember to comment, rate and subscribe. I'm Tyler Moore. Thank you so much.